In London at Chemcon Europe 2022, we already got excellent updates on the regulatory activities in the Asia Pacific region, among others by Sume Teo from ExxonMobil. For this part of the Chem Connection, we will connect with Sume in Kuala Lumpur. Hi Sume, could you provide a recap of the most important regulatory developments in the Asia Pacific region in the Year of the Tiger? Hello, Chaired. Indeed, uh, these past two years saw some unprecedented events. Starting with the COVID pandemic in early 2020, which brought on lockdowns, then movement restrictions and economic uncertainty, and then supply chain disruptions. And then earlier this year, the Ukraine conflict. It has indeed been a difficult two years for most countries. And as such, we are also seeing some delays or extensions of regulatory deadlines, which was certainly welcomed by the industry as we were struggling to cope with such dynamic and challenging circumstances. However, that's not to say that everything came to a standstill. Starting off with Southeast Asia, where I'm located, I'll focus on Thailand and Vietnam, who are both developing their respective chemical inventories. Now, Thailand had drawn from their List 5.6, Notification of Production or Import of Hazardous Substances, first published in 2015, to develop their chemical inventory. Now, in September this year, the Department of Industrial Works published the revised notification changing it from a product-based notification to a substance notification, which should make it easier to develop their chemical inventory further. Now, this regulation will require local companies to do a post-market notification of hazardous substances for volumes greater than one ton a year. So for lower volumes or non-hazardous substances, it is voluntary. Now, a new system, an online system, is being developed for the notification process and the notification window will be from the 1st of January to the 30th of June of the following year. The first report is expected next year. However, one concern is that the revised notification still presents challenges for foreign suppliers where confidential chemical information is required to be provided on behalf of their Thai customers. We do hope that the new online system can permit foreign suppliers to securely provide confidential chemical inf information directly to the authorities. Thank you for your update on Thailand. CBI is always an important issue. Is this also an issue in Vietnam or...? For Vietnam, there has been no reopening of the chemical inventory nomination window since April 2021. CBI is certainly also an issue since there are no proper provisions to address it. They are allowing offline nomination of substances without cast numbers but it is unclear if such nominations are successful. Additionally, another unique feature with the Vietnam nomination process is the need to submit evidence of being in the market with the nomination of substances, which can also lead to CBI issues. And from what we can see, the authorities are still reviewing the nominations that have been made in the previous openings and ensuring that those with proper evidence are approved and then added to the inventory. Now, industry is concerned that the overall approval rate remains quite low, and indeed, we hope that they are actively addressing all these issues. On the other hand, in the past year, the authorities are actively revising various laws and regulations, including the high-level law on chemicals and several major chemical management regulations. Recently, they finalized Decree 82, which revises Decree 113 of 2017, adding chemicals to the annexes or lists of controlled chemicals, including persistent organic pollutants from the Stockholm Convention. Subsequently, Circular Number 17 was finalized to amend the related uh, regulation or related guideline in Circular Number 32 from 2017. Part of the changes that were made uh, to Decree 82 addresses the inconsistencies with GHS. So Vietnam implements uh, the second edition of the GHS onwards, and adjustments were then made to the regulatory text to align with this. Within the region, there are activities um, around GHS regulations as well, generally to update to more recent versions of the GHS. For one, Malaysia is currently consulting on their revision to the eighth edition of the GHS from the current third edition. Singapore is also in the midst of revising their standards, SS586, parts two and three, which address classification and labeling and the safety data sheets respectively. And this will update them to the seventh edition of the GHS. And likewise in Thailand, uh, they have initiated a consultation process to update their GHS implementation. 
great! I'm sure we will learn more on Southeast Asia during Chemical the Americas 2023 in San Francisco. Let's move to another part of Asia, India. Home to the Bengal Tiger and many expectations on the Indian chemical management and safety rules. Or is this a paper tiger? Indeed, one of the key developments in AP that industry is keenly following is the Indian chemical management and safety rules. There's been at least four revisions of this draft regulation that has been widely circulated to the industry, although no further revisions were published in the last two years. It is an ambitious regulation, merging very significant regulatory actions into one regulation. So for one, it implements the GHS. Secondly, it also calls for the development of a chemical inventory through a notification process. And then there's a REACH-like registration of priority chemicals. Now, this is unique because in other countries, each of these regulatory measures would typically be addressed in separate regulations, one after another. And that may make sense because each of these measures usually take five or more years to implement. In fact, if you look at Europe, from the time the Dangerous Substance Directive was introduced, and we consider that as a precursor to GHS, to the first registration deadline for REACH, it was at least a 40-year journey. But the timing in this CMS regulation would compress it to about one and a half years from when it comes into effect to the initial registration deadline. So very ambitious indeed, which is why industry is also concerned. We do hope that authorities can relook at the timeline and allow sufficient time for each step to be socialized so that they can be properly implemented. For example, on GHS implementation, now, experience from other countries has shown that it takes at least three to five years to implement this well. For one, guidance documents need to be developed, specifying which building blocks they will adopt. Uh, Multi-level training should be planned thoughtfully so that all stakeholders, from workers handling the chemicals to enforcement officers, have all the right capabilities. And this is especially critical for small and medium-sized companies. Typically, implementation would also be phased in, for example, separate deadlines for substances versus mixtures. So a lot of effort there, and I think five years may be a more realistic time frame. And then the inventory. I think also recent experiences show that at least five years may be needed to properly set it up due to the sheer volume of data that will be submitted once industry starts nominating. And as industry deals with domination and authorities deal with managing data that comes in, each stakeholder will be building up their technical capability and this will help set them up for the next major regulatory activity, which is the registration process. And we do hope that the criteria for priority chemicals that are subject to registration will be risk-based, taking into account not just hazards of the chemicals, but exposures as well. So for example, they could factor in volumes or general use patterns to filter out the higher potential risk chemicals. This will then ensure that higher potential risk chemicals will receive more attention through registration and then further risk assessments and then implementing risk management steps. And then this will ensure that scarce resources are more efficiently and effectively deployed to those with higher potential risk. Additionally, the CMS rules calls for a chemical regulatory authority to be appointed, and we understand that it is still progressing. So without the establishment of such an authority, it would be difficult to finalize the regulation. The other development that industry has been following is the mandatory product standards imposed by the Bureau of Indian Standards on an increasing number of chemicals. Now, the perception is that this is being done to manage the safety of chemicals. However, when you look at these standards, they appear to address quality and not the safety of chemicals. Thanks. Let's move to a country that is enhancing the safety, health and environment regulations. China. Yes, indeed, it is a big market and there has been a number of regulatory developments in recent years. Starting off with uh, Ministry of Ecology and Environment, MEE. By now, MEE Order 12, the revised regulation to manage new substances have been in place for almost two years. The simplification made for lower risk chemicals like polymers and low volumes of grade less than one ton a year has been appreciated. However, the industry experience is that data requirements are generally higher and tougher with full notifications and approval rates of the full notifications are lower as well. It was also interesting to note that the authorities stepped up enforcement this year 
and several non-compliant companies were then penalised. Industry is very keenly following MEE's plans on existing chemicals. Over the last few years, we have seen MEE developing and shaping their chemicals plans for broad chemical management framework. While new chemicals are already well managed, now through order 12 that I have just mentioned, the framework to manage existing chemicals is now starting to fall into place. The draft regulation on environmental risk assessment and control of toxic and hazardous chemical substances was published in 2020 and it provides the overarching framework for managing new and existing chemicals. There's also the guidelines for screening of priority assessment chemicals finalized about a year ago. Publication of the priority control list over the last five years. Consulting on key control new pollutant lists just this September and more. It's like pieces of a puzzle uh, to form a full picture of how MEE will manage all chemicals. And that full picture is presented in the publication of the Emerging Pollutants Management Action Plan just this May, where there's clear emphasis on persistent organic pollutants, endocrine disrupting chemicals, as well as antibiotics. On the other hand, the Ministry of Emergency Management, MEM, is also upgrading the Decree 591 into a higher level hazardous chemicals safety law. This will be a very important law to manage the handling of hazardous chemicals through the supply chain, so industry is also following closely. MEM has been piloting trials to use QR codes in conjunction with safety labeling with the intent to more efficiently transfer chemical hazards information through the whole life cycle and supply chain. There have been trials in Guangdong, Shandong and Suzhou, for example. Industry is waiting for the regulation to be put in place so that implementation of the QR code will be harmonized through the country. I think also that QR codes is an emerging trend beyond China, but I think it looks like China is one of the first movers and may indeed pave the way for other economies and regulators to follow suit. I'm sure I like the QR codes principle. It's something we also use in our Chemcon calendar so that people can watch the Chemcon TV interviews that are linked with the unique Chemcon cartoons. This is the 2023 calendar. But before going to next year, I think we can summarize 2022 by the expression a tiger can't change its stripes. In other words, ongoing developments in Asia progressed, but not a lot of new initiatives were launched. Sumei, will this be different in 2023, the year of the rabbit? Can we expect new regulations? Will local authorities pull a rabbit out of their heads? Well, COVID is considered over in many parts of the world. We saw AP emerge slightly later from severe restrictions, though we know it's not fully lifted through all of AP yet. But with that and with economic activities ramping up again, I think we will see more regulatory initiatives coming. Per perhaps there could have been activities that have been going on in the background and that may now get published. Some of the drafts that have been in progress may be further amended or even finalized. That would be my expectations. Final question. What do you think are the most important regulatory considerations and challenges for the chemicals industry in 2023? I think a key challenge with some of the developments is that they may be overly complex compared to the local industry or regulatory authorities capacity or capability. It's the right move for regulators to learn from more developed regulatory systems when they are drafting the regulation. But the implementation has to be adjusted to the right level of complexity and must take a step-by-step -step approach. Chemical control regulations should be based on risk, not hazards of chemicals, to be truly protective. Compliance will be another challenge. Many of the developments can be quite complex and sometimes they fail to factor in the long and complicated supply chain of the chemical industry. For example, when data owners do not reside in the country where confidential submissions need to be made. Generally, we hope that regulators will continue to consult with the industry from the very start of the regulatory activity or the regulatory development, as we may have ideas to share, and all the way to when implementing steps are being developed, so that we can find practical and workable ways to address the objectives of that regulation. Sume, thank you very much for your contribution to this Chem Connection. Looking forward to seeing you in 2023 at Chemcon the Americas 2023 in San Francisco and Chemcon Europe 2023 in Fall.